Hi, welcome to Community Homeworks Workshop this evening. We're glad you're joining us. My name is Tiana Harrison and I'm the Education and Volunteer Coordinator here at Community Homeworks. If you're watching this live, please feel free to comment to let us know where you're tuning in from. Also, if you would like to join the discussion or ask a question, please put that in the comments as well. If you are watching this after the live broadcast, we're still happy that you're here and ask that and you can still ask questions in the comment sections, but it might take a little longer for us to respond. Community Homeworks is a nonprofit organization with a mission to empower homeowners to maintain safe, sustainable, and dignified homes. We get our fundings from grants, gifts, and donations. So if you find value in this workshop tonight, we encourage you to donate on our website, communityhomeworks.org. Tonight's workshop is a rain barrel build class and our instructor is none other than Mr. Todd Holm and Jason Byler. Thanks for being here, both of you guys, and we look forward to learning more about rain barrels. Great. Thanks, Tiana. Let's see, where can we be seen? we got to cut off our heads. That's cool. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, Todd and I used to work together here at Community Homework, so um, it's kind of like a reunion tour it today. Is. It is a reunion. Um, and we're looking forward to doing this. Um, we also have one person in the studio audience today so we'll probably probably try to get them out of their seat and help us out a little bit um, but we are going to be building uh, a rain barrel and basically we want a way to catch water now why would we want to catch water do to you have any water reasons? our garden water your garden what do you want to catch water for okay she said, use up as much of the, of the uh, reusable, renewable resource as we have instead of it just going into the gutters or out onto the, out onto the grass or something like that. So we want to try to conserve our water a little bit. We're lucky here in Michigan that our, um, we have a, an abundant supply of water. It's not like we're running low on water. And our water is fairly cheap. Um, but with climate change and with other changes in our environment, uh, that's probably going to change. It's probably going to get much more expensive. One of the other reasons that people do rain barrels is because they don't want to water their garden or their plants with chlorinated water because some plants are sensitive to chlorine. And if you're on city water, there is some chlorine in there as well. So um, it's, a, it's a reason to do that. I've got a friend out in Lawton who has a shed on his property but does not have a house and so does not have a well, does not have city water so he collects rainwater to water his garden that's the only water he has that's how he he waters everything is with rainwater or else he has to carry things from home so lots of reason to to collect water right um if you live in california from what i understand they charge you you're not allowed to take the water it's right. it belongs to the state right but here in michigan if you collect water off your roof it's okay to use um for watering so we're a long ways from california we're a long ways from california thank you i'm so glad we are yes um <laughs> so our our goal tonight is to be able to collect a little bit of water um or a lot of water if we want to collect a lot of water uh we have 55 yeah. gallon drums here that we're going to be talking about how to collect water with that but you wouldn't have to use a 55 gallon drum you could use whatever holds water you could use a mm -hmm. bathtub you could pipe your water from your from your roof into your bathtub if you'd like you could use uh five gallon buckets you could use what other weird things have i seen trash can <clears throat> trash cans or For sure um i don't know what other ideas do you have oh i mean you covered them I we mean, covered them okay anything that's a bucket anything that's like a bucket Whole, a um, vessel. oh one of the reasons i i forgot to say why you might do a rain barrel is if you have trouble with water in your basement so mm -hmm. if you have a gutter that comes down next to your house and you want to get that water away from your house farther, you could run it into a rain barrel and then run it from there out into your yard or farther out to get it away from the house so that you're not getting so much water in the, in the basement. Um, I actually have a swimming pool at my house and I use a rain barrel to collect the water to put into the swimming pool so that it's preheated and also I'm not running city water into the swimming pool. So... It's another idea on, on why to do it. But, and it's softened. And it's softened, right. Right. I awesome. found that it's a little more difficult to get all the like the chemical balance just right with rainwater. Right. But 
because you get all kinds of gunk off the roof and out of the gutters and right. all that. But that's okay. Gunk is good. Gunk is good. So Especially we want to build barrel. a we want to build a rain barrel. Um, what is what is important for a rain barrel? Why do you want to do a, a barrel instead of a bucket? Well, you want a food grade barrel for you want one. a food grade barrel. Okay, that's that's, true. that's important. Um, you don't want something that's had oil in it, right? Um, preferably honey, honey, maybe. So, um, but food grade barrels where you start. Okay, um, the barrels we're using tonight were donated to uh, to us at a past workshop uh, by Bell's Beer. So thank you, Bell's Beer. Unfortunately, when I contacted them last week, they said they didn't have any barrels available. Um, they've changed how they're doing some of their ingredients, and so they're using fewer barrels. But we're still hoping to be able to get some barrels from them once in a while in the future. Uh, we might just have to store them here instead of having them stored at Bell's. But I think these are all Bell's, um, Bell's barrels here. Um, you can also find barrels for sale along the road sometimes. You can find barrels on uh, Facebook Marketplace and at... Um, Craigslist, mm -hmm. places like that. For sure. Anything else? Is that the only place people uh, do classifieds anymore? I have not seen a classified ad <laughs> in a long time. Although there is that free paper. Oh, the free paper. Maybe it's in there too. I haven't looked in there for, for barrels. We got a puppy last year out of that free paper. Oh, nice. So a puppy. It can happen. Okay. A so, puppy. Nice. Not a real um, barrel. But. Barrels usually cost, oh, five, ten, fifteen, bu 15 bucks a piece um, if they're nice food grade ones. Um, and like Todd said, we don't want to use something that was used for something toxic. We don't want to yeah. use something that had chemicals in it, or it's going to kind of defeat the purpose of trying to save all the water in there because it's going to mess right. up that. Um, so we want a way to get the water into the barrel, mm -hmm. and then we want a way to get it to where we want it in the yard. We want it to be able to move it wherever we want it, right? Right. So what do, what do we want to do to get it into the barrel? Well, we have to work on the top. We have to work on the top. Okay. And we've got, we have instructions. We do have instructions. So okay. we better, we should follow instructions. Okay. You want to follow the instructions? Well, I like following instructions okay. just because it works. Where would you start, Jason? I would try to figure out a way to catch it in there. Yeah. Yeah. And so we sure. could just put this under the eaves of the house, like yeah. under the, the edge of the roof, if you don't have a gutter. But if we already have gutters, we could we could get the rain into the gutters and then direct it into the rain barrel. Um, but you have to keep your gutters cleaned out then, right? Because that could be a problem. Um, otherwise, they just it just runs over the edge. And I think we have another question over here. Go for it. You can use your mic. That's fine. Okay. How can how lo how long can water stay in the rain barrel? I will say that it gets a little stinky after mm -hmm. it's been in there a while because there's bacteria and so on that gets in there. And we will talk a little bit more about how to keep it as fresh as possible. But um, this time of year with, with not having much rain, um, I've got some in my rain barrel. It got filled up at home, and I, I have to say it's a little stinky now. Yeah. So you would not want to drink it. You probably wouldn't even want to bathe in it because it would be stinky. But um, you do have water for things like watering and and the plants aren't going to care if it's stinky or not. They're not going to mind at I all. I think they like it better. I mean, um, there's some. I think the nutrients, I think the plants probably especially like especially because it's probably from leaves. The stink. Yeah, and it's probably from other things that have been right. in your gutter that the moss. leaves and things that are in there and mm -hmm. mixing in with the water. It's kind of a natural. Right. You know, right. Is that? I mean, it yeah. Seems that seems logical. Do you have something else you wanted to say, Bree? No, she she's good. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can always question. You can always what? You can always question. But <laughs> right. to me, that's what, when I look at my rain barrel, it's always, it has this, you know, kind of like sludge at the bottom right. of, of debris. And, I, and when it's mixed in with the water, I mean, it might smell, but my plants love it. So, I mm -hmm. mean, I can't complain. So And I usually I, rinse mine out once a year, yeah. um, turn it upside down over the winter so it For doesn't sure. just accumulate in there in the wintertime. But right. um, that sludge is in there and it, it isn't, it isn't real pleasant. No, but just don't don't look in. You're good then, right? Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Nothing. Um, so we need to get it into the into the rain barrel. We've got right. a couple different ways that it comes down from gutters. Um, usually, you'll have a gutter pipe, something like this, coming off your roof. Um, 
and you might have to cut it to get it to the right size to make it fit under your rain barrel, depending where you set your rain barrel. Um, some people have a, why can't I figure out how this goes? There we go. Some people have an elbow at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so you could, you could even help that to help it go in. I have one at my house that I don't even have a lid on. Right. So it's just open like this. And I took a piece of screen and stretched it over the top. And then it just gets filtered as it goes in there. So what, the what else does the screen do? What else does you know, the screen why do? You, do? Why do you want to screen the water? Well, you want a screen to keep the little kids out because you don't want anybody swimming there, in there it. There is that. And you also want a screen to keep the mosquitoes out because uh, mosquitoes can be a problem yeah. uh, in our in our Michigan summers. Yeah. So uh, you do want some sort of a screen. Um, I also tend to put the little mosquito dunks in mine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've done that with yours or not. It. It's a they're they're little things you can pick up at the hardware store. They're usually a little circle. Um, and they have a bacteria in them that um, actually eats the mosquito larvae so it doesn't develop. But it's a All naturally right. occurring bacteria called right. Bacillus thuringiensis. How about that? That's awesome. Um, so you can you can keep them out that way too. Or, but or, then the mosquito larvae kind of add to that. That's true. They add to the sludge. sludge. The so. <laughs> All right. Which is good for the plants. So if we have a lid, what do we do there to get through that hole in the mm. lid because we've got we've got holes in this lid right all right these little these little spots here these these are openings where when this was at bells they probably opened it up and used it to pump the, whatever was in this out mm -hmm. whether it was honey whether it was flavoring whatever mm -hmm. um so they would have had to open these holes these are called bung holes mm -hmm. uh, or bung openings and it's kind of cool because we have a cool tool, tool that works with this. This is called a bung wrench, what Todd's holding. Um, and it's got little prongs that fit down in there. Maybe. Let's see. Not in this be, one. Let's see if you can get the other one. Yeah, there we go. We can unscrew that lefty Lucy. You're doing a great job, Todd. Uh, I've, I've done this before. I feel like it. All right. All right. So we could use that one or we could use this one here. I did find that many of our, most of our, our barrels that we get from Bells have two different sizes of thread. And so one is a fine thread, one is a coarse thread. Do you want to take this one out too? With we this? can. Do you know how to take it out? Well. Are you, are you smarter I mean, there, than there, a there, there are community some... homeworks person? Oh, he got it with that. Okay. So he's using the, slip joint plot what did we call it this is what 30 years of building experience gets you look at that oh that uh, one has two they look like the same, same coarse coarseness of thread oh yeah same thread same thread okay yep so we could use either one do we want both of them open so for any you, reason this one has like a plug inside of a plug that uh, has a plug in a plug so if you I don't know. There's no reason to really want water to come out the top. You really are just using the top to collect the water. Okay. So I would just put one back in. Okay. If you're only going to use one. But if pressure builds up. Okay. And you're finding that if you if you try to put too much pressure here, or if this connection is too tight, uh -huh. this will allow you to drain water easier when you have more air inside. The, oh, the barrel, right. So. Right. Okay. <clears throat> that makes sense. Okay, so how do we get the water from here into there, Todd? Well, I'm just going to stand here and hold the water. My off <laughs> screen here. Let's see. Are both these the same? They should both be the same. They are. <clears throat> so this is a um, a union mm -hmm. that would go from a what is this two inch? I think it's two inch threaded. Two inch threaded to a um, a Two inch solvent slip. Uh, slip. Call it a slip. Slip. Okay. Slip For a rain barrel, it's a slip. Okay. Sounds good. So all right. we screw that one in. We do we need any in. type of solvent on it? Or I don't any? think we need any solvent because this is all just going in with yeah, right. with gravity. Yeah. Okay. So can we see that there. or should we lower? Let's. I'm going to move this down so we can see the top a little oh, easier. Oh yeah, yeah. Can we still see it? We can still see it. You can kind of do this. All right. Beautiful. So that's, uh, that's been screwed onto there like that. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And then what else do we need? 
Well, looks like we need some kind of, so this is just two inch pipe. This is just a short piece of two inch pipe. Yeah. And then this cap goes on. Oh, what's that cap going to be called? It was, this would be a, um, a reducer from a four inch to a two inch line reducer. Okay. It's all stuff you can get at a hardware store. So it's really pretty easy to get. So, and then I is think. Is this expensive? Uh, nowadays, yes. <laughs> it's plastic no, stuff, it's so not. it's not as expensive as it's wood. It's not at all. It, you know, and, you know, I mean, you probably can buy a rain barrel for what, 50, 60 bucks. You can probably, you know. I think they're higher is, than that, but. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think you can, you know, this is under, under 20 bucks. Under 20 bucks. So, um, and then your drink, your downspout. Right. Which way you want it to go in. Yeah. I mean, it, it fits it in there right in like every that. which way, you know, so yep. however it comes out of your gutter, mm-hmm. I like to raise my barrel up, you know, How high? I, because, you know, when you're watering, I have mine hooked up to a hose. Okay. And so when you're watering, you know, I'm tall. So, I mean, my head doesn't even fit in the screen. Right. So, um, the, the hose, I, since I'm holding it up so high, when I get the water gets halfway down, I'll lose that pressure and not be able to water mm-hmm. like the herbs on the other side of the garden. Mm-hmm. So, so the I, higher your rain barrel is off the ground, mm-hmm. the more water pressure you'll have yes. in your hose. Absolutely. Um, I actually raised mine up on two cement block or four cement blocks. Yep. So two, two on the lower level, two on the second level so that I could fit my watering can underneath or a bucket underneath, Yep. but also so that I have a little bit more, drop so that i can water things with a little bit more pressure right i can get a little bit more water pressure out at the end of the hose now wh- where's the screen for this oh i don't know isn't there one over here well we used to have a screen i think there's is this so, what you're... so this is what i normally use um let's see which which camera are we at this is um what is that quarter inch hardware cloth quarter inch hardware cloth yeah. and so i cut it into a into a square that would fit inside of the inside of the what we use as a funnel which is the reducer mm-hmm. so i can slide it right in there and that helps to keep the crud out like the leaves and the moss and things like that the only problem i've run into with this is when i've got the gutter running straight into there the the leaves and the moss get down in there and they end up plugging that spot up so every once in a while you have to pull this up out of the out of the way scoop the junk out throw it over in your flower bed or something and Mm -hmm. put it back in Mm -hmm. um but also the quarter inch so the quarter inch keeps the debris out uh but doesn't do anything for mosquitoes the mosquitoes are going to go right through that so um we would need a finer screen if we were going to do that but a finer screen is also going to clog up a lot quicker. So we don't necessarily want to use a finer screen if we don't want to have to clean this out every right. every time it rains, basically. Right. If you could figure out a way to make this really wide, mm-hmm. you know, and you can get creative with this stuff. I mean, and, and maybe there's a way to prevent it from where you're j- this is kind of up off the not sitting down inside mm-hmm. where it's just dumping into there. You might find that that's a little bit easier to just to clean out. You know, you're in your garden every day anyway, so you might as well. Well, hopefully you are. Yeah. Like I like I said before, I have one that didn't come with a lid. Mm-hmm. And so as an experiment, I just took a piece of window screen, stretched it over, and tied it to the top with a, with a piece of, like, bungee cord. Brilliant. And then I put the – I have it coming down just above it yeah. like this in the gutter, and it is a large enough surface area – that it doesn't get clogged up in there. I can just walk along, scoop it up, throw it at the kids, whatever, and we're all good. You can get um, hardware cloth that could even... We could, but I figured if I have window screen, it's going to keep the mosquitoes out better. Well, no, I mean as both. Oh, have both. Yeah, I think okay. the one I had, I, I, I've had to replace it a few times because it gets, uh, you know, just gets um, rusted out. But, okay. Yeah. All right. So this is how we can run it in there. Yeah. Are there other ways of running it in there? Oh, well, yeah. Well, uh, lots of ways. Lots of ways. I mean, so this is just one example of how to build a rain barrel. We could. There's lots of other ways online. Um, this is the way that I figured out to do it fairly cheaply using things that you can get at the hardware store because I didn't want to have to mail order you know, parts from across the country, and I didn't want to have to pay 
60 bucks to make a rain barrel. I wanted something that would be a little cheaper and a little easier to build. Yes, ma'am. Can you buy, the question was, can you buy gutters in small pieces like this or do you have to get it cut at the hardware store? I don't know that you can, I wouldn't I, doubt it. They're doing a lot of that kind of thing now where they're yeah, they're so, giving you short pieces. So you can buy these individually, of course, right. any of the 90s. You can buy any um, of those. In this sections, I've I've seen a few stores where they, they have them in 10 foot long sticks and then they will have like a four foot stick as well so you can you can buy this stuff in shorter sections but it's fairly inexpensive so mm -hmm. um and cuts relatively easily so what would you cut um, it with i you know if you're skilled and have the tool and know how to use it you could use a, a compound miter saw or a miter saw okay from so a, you could use a power you a can power use tool. a power tool yep you can use um hand cutters do we have any hand cutters here oh which kind well, just like even tin snips oh, or tin anything snips? like that. Uh, I don't know if we have any tin snips here. Um, I think we have some up in one of the other boxes, but yeah, hacksaw. Um, there you go. Even a, even something like this hacksaw, yeah. you can cut it with. So if you're if you're retrofitting your house to work with this, you can you can figure out what height you want it and where you need the elbow to go. This this uh, 45, 90 degree bend, whatever that's going to be. Right. And you could cut it off with a hacksaw or with tin snips or beavers probably aren't going to work. Well, I, you know, I have, um, my house, I, my property line is right only about five feet from the back of our house. Okay. And so we ha I didn't want to put the rain, the, the barrel right there mm -hmm. because it blocks going to the garden from the back oh. of the house. So we made it and I, I, from the gutter, the water goes over it like a little water bridge oh. and then down and, and it's kind of fun. How so, fast, how fast does it have to drop? Uh, well, just enough to keep the water okay. flowing. I mean, nothing, not, not, you know, you know, obviously you can just not level more right. than level, but right. it doesn't take much. Okay. Uh, about an eighth of an inch per foot. Okay. So. Do you have any trouble with that? with that bridge freezing up in the winter or do you eliminate that in the winter? I let it, I, so in the winter time, I just take the plug off the, out of the bottom, okay. open up all the valves on this and just let winter happen. Okay. Um, it seems to be working so far. If you're, if your house is susceptible to damage or, you know, you have water that you want to get away mm -hmm. from the house, then I would divert it elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, there's tons of ways to, right. to manage it. All right. So now we got our water in our barrel. How do we get it back out? Well, that's where the power tools come in. That's where the power tools come in. Yep. How are you with power tools? Are you good with power tools? Okay. So what do we need power tool wise, Todd? Well, we need a power drill. Okay. Or we need a to... drill. You know, I guess you don't need a power. I mean, you could do one of the augers. Oh, I don't. I've never tried you know, to use one of those uh... with a saw, but. I think the auger, you know, the one thing, the one trick about putting, using these bits, uh -huh. and I don't know who told me this a long time, some wise old man. Okay. I think his name was Jason. Okay. Um, he said uh, to put the, your, put these bits in a freezer hmm. first to get them really cold so that when they, when you go to cut through plastic, it doesn't melt the plastic and then make the hole bigger than what you're than what the bit's supposed okay. intended to, to do to cut. Okay. So, um, cause a lot of times when you're cutting the hole, you want it to be exactly this size so that the threads, if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the threads oh, on enough. the end of that are, <clears throat> are going to actually cut into some of that plastic that's there that's left behind. And if it gets too big, it's just going to be free flowing. So okay. with our design here, do we have a couple like, ways to go around that? Right, we so. do have a couple ways of going around it. With our design here, we are trying to find, um, use the, the fewest amount of tools possible, okay, and the um, least expense possible. So, what size what size drill are we using here? This is a, is it a one inch? No, I think it's a one inch. A twenty, yep. I think it's twenty five millimeter. Twenty something five like that. millimeter. Yes. Okay, here, can you show that to the camera so they can see? Yes. 25 millimeter. So that's called a hole saw hole and that saw. will, it will cut kind of like a wheel shape out of the, yep. out of whatever you're drilling. And that's a, that is a, um, a guide point. 
so the guide point drill oh right it has out, a little so. a little drill on a smaller drill on the inside yep okay so if we're wanting to drain this thing where do we want to put our where would we want to put our drain but then you're going to get all the sludge well not quite on the bottom bottom brie where would you put it Four inches up. Four inches up. Why four inches? Just because that's that would sound good to you? Okay. Good Do you want to come show us? Okay. Do we have a tape measure? Do we need to tape? We could. One? Would you like a tape measure to be exact? One of the nice things about... Oh, she's, she's measuring with her thumbs. There you go. Okay. So somewhere there. All right. Do you want to show us how it's do done? You, do you want to be... What about this ridge? Oh, here? that is ridge. That, is that an issue, you think? I don't know. I think I'd I'd want to I'd want to be below the ridge. You want to go the below ridge. the ridge a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Should we see what happens? Okay. We're going forward, so that's a good start. We're just going to stand here and watch you work. How about that? Okay. We got it. Yep. Beautiful. That's it. So we got a hole drilled in the side of the rain barrel now. No turning back. No turning back. Was that hard to do? No. no. Okay, good. All right. So we have our, awesome. our hole. Now we have a couple different ways we could do the valve on the bottom. Um, the original way that I did it on these things was I Sorry. got this little fitting here, which is a three quarter inch by half inch reducer threaded mm -hmm. both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and I put a little bit of silicone sealant around these threads, which we could do, because we've got it here. Well, this is caulk. You mean sil silicone or caulk? Si silicone sealant. Now, why so, would you use silicone versus caulk? Well, it doesn't matter if it, you want it to be able to expand and contract sure. with the thing. You don't, you don't want it to necessarily get painted or anything and like dry. that. Dry and, right. and caulk, regular house caulk dries. It dries more solid, and so it doesn't flex as so much. So, like on a, on a silicone that you'd put around a tub. Right. For water. Right. Perfect. Right. So from there, this three-quarter inch thread should thread almost exactly into that hole that we just drilled. So we could yep. screw this in, thread it in, and if you have silicone on there, after you get that in, let that dry for 24 hours, and it will be set up enough that it's not going to just fall out and it's not going to leak. And then you can come along with a hose bib. This is called a hose bib, what most people call a faucet. Um, and this is a half inch hose bib. And we could screw that right into that fitting. Do you think you'd need to have wow. pipe dope or something on there? Um, th there isn't any pressure to this. And I, it, when you're doing pipe, and I'll tell you, the, 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 that pipe is tapered on this, and mm -hmm. it's not in here. Right. And so, as you're tightening that that this on, you're you're tightening that to the point where it's sealing it. So that's getting larger in that fitting. Okay. And so it doesn't help to add some silicone. I I'd like to see adding silicone only because if you if you find that you you get to this point in your sideways with the with your spigot and you're okay. like this you're like oh man and i don't have any more where to go and uh -huh. you want to back it up okay if you back it up and there's silicone in there then the silicone actually seals it and keeps it sealed uh -huh. whereas you try to crank it again to get to that point to get to this point you could be going past this point stripping the plastic going you know not being able to to do it so okay. leaving the silicone let it do its job so to so say. we did we did this design for the first couple that we did here at community homeworks and we had a few people that had trouble with this piece leaking yeah, and so that. we came up with some other ideas on how we could do it um what's actually, this what is that you want to explain this um sure um this is oh what is it even called i forget what it's called this is a this is a fitting that they sell places like uh, tractor supply mm -hmm. and places like that. Um, and I think it's called a bulkhead fitting. Uh, but you'd have to have it, right. you'd have to make a, a bigger hole. So you'd have to get a hole saw that would cut this larger diameter here. I think that's probably inch and a quarter or so. Yeah. Much bigger. Um, and then this has a rubber seal here 
and it's got another piece that comes from the inside and basically squashes that rubber seal. So you would put, put it through the side and screw this on and it would squash that rubber seal. And then you could take this, that same faucet, that same hose bib, yep. and screw this into the outside. The problem with this, this is going to make a very, very secure um, connection on the outside of the barrel. The problem that I see is now these aren't, I haven't seen these at Lowe's and Menards and hardware stores. Yeah, I've seen these more at specialty buy. spots yeah. or places like Tractor Supply. Mm -hmm. Also, this one fitting is probably going to cost as much as all the other fittings combined. Yeah, yeah. So it usually costs 15 to $20 just for this one fitting. So if you can get around this and figure out another way to do it, it, it makes it a lot cheaper and it can still work. For sure. The, the new way that we had of, of doing this, courtesy of Brett Huckabee, mm -hmm. we, sh we should probably give him credit, right? For sure. Okay. This um, is the Brett technique. This technique. is the Brett technique. We take, we take this, what are we going to call this? Well, That's another union. reducer. Reducer, union. Union. It's a, so it's threaded, on, it's threaded yep. on one side. There we go. Threaded on this side. This side is a slip fitting, so it would just be a friction fit. Yep. Um, this side doesn't really matter. It's going to be sitting inside the rain barrel. Yep. Um, we want to get a, let's see, do we have any rubber O-rings over there? We do. Because Brett would definitely use a rubber O-ring. Yeah. This is a number 17, one and one sixteenth outer diameter. You can see that. <laughs> so it's a little smaller than I that inner think, diameter. I don't think, I can't, I, yeah, there you go. Okay. But it looks like that. All right. right. So we're going to put this on on the fitting here. Slide that up. So now we have a little rubber seal on this. Yep. The challenge now is we need to get this inside the barrel and out through that hole and hold it, which is a little bit of a contortionist trick. So I'm going to put this barrel upside down over, over Jason. Over me, okay. And then what? And then he's going to be able to thread that through the other side. You think so? I bet. Okay. I mean, it's worth a shot. How about I if mean, we just lay it on its side? You can do that too, but I can hold it so that you don't seem to. Do you need me to put something on the? I wonder if the microphone echoes in here. I, there you go. It's through. So All you right. see how it, awesome. You so now it. it came out the other side. And now what do we do? Well, did you have the fitting over there? I did not. Oh, no, I think here it's we still go. behind you. So now we we're using a different. a different type of, of, um, spigot this is called a boiler valve boiler valve yep and this is a three quarter inch boiler valve that has female threads on it so we can screw that onto that little piece of plastic there but i need to hold on to that otherwise it's just going to spin free inside so i'm going right. to hold on i'm going back in that's tightening pretty that's getting pretty good if you had silicone on that that'd be done That'll be done? Yeah, for sure. And there's even no without question. silicone, it's probably not going to leak much at all no, because there's yeah. very little pressure but, on that. Yep. So now we have a way to get it out. Now we could hook our hose on there. We could get our watering can underneath it. Yep. Um, I like it. And there's lots just a of little, room for sludge. Lots of room for sludge. Actually, you know what I find is my hose, I have one rain barrel that is the, the hole is relatively low on it. Uh huh. And uh i will get a lot of blockage in the hoses that you know that especially near the end of the year when there's a lot more coming you know getting into the water mm -hmm. so up having it up a little bit higher i think is a smart move okay so all right so we have a way to get it, our water into the oh that's not our lid where's our lid oh it's over there you, you put it behind you so we have a way to get it in our in our bucket sorry i'm not even on the on the video screen anymore we have a way to get it out of our bucket um what else do we need anything well i mean what if this gets full what if it gets full it's just going to overflow right right well i mean yes yes um but what can you do to to kind of remedy and maybe capture some of that overflow okay so what i do on mine 
and I realized I didn't pick up one of the fittings today when I stopped at the hardware store. Um, they have there's a fitting that is similar to this guy here. Remember yep. that one that we used for our original design? There's yep. a fitting that's similar to that that threads in with the same size three quarter inch thread, but then on the outside it has the same thread as a hose. Mm -hmm. um, so it's called a garden garden hose. It's a thread? three quarter inch garden hose to one inch to one inch one inch pipe thread. Pipe thread, and there's two. It's two different threads. So if you get it reversed, it won't work quite right. Right. It's not going to hook on onto you your need, garden hose. You need you right. need the one that that in a hardware store. If you explain this to uh -huh. that, I mean that is really what they're there for. Is, right. is the hardware stores are the best places to go because they'll have those fittings and they'll have them in PVC. Right. So, and then so you can buy a cap for it. If we you would put it. we would put that somewhere near the top where we want our top level to be. Drill the hole through, put that fitting in, and then we could put we could put a hose on it and run it out into our yard. Yep. Or we could just let it sit like that, and and when it gets full, it's just going to squirt out the side, as long as it's not so close to your house that it's running back into your basement. Correct. So on on one of mine, I have it next to the garage, so I don't have a basement under the garage. I just have it sort of running out next to the garage and it's not a big deal. Right. Um, but in other situations, I would want it to go farther away. Right. Um, my initial design, I drilled about a three eighths inch hole up near the top and just drilled a hole. And I was really surprised how much water coming in, it would, it would actually build up pressure and it would squirt out the side. It looked really oh, cool wow. to watch. Oh yeah. Um, but this works a lot better. Um, Tiana, you have a question. Do we dump the water before the winter? Good question. So uh, we'll get there in just a sec. How about that? Let's finish this up. Um, mm -hmm. This is also, when we're doing the overflow piece, we also want to make sure that we're not, that we're, we're having that overflow come out the side in relationship to this spigot, the side that we want. If we want it to come out, you know, around the corner, or if we mm -hmm. want it to come out behind, we have to figure all that out first. Um, yeah, set it up, set it up, and say, okay, it'd be more convenient if it came out the back. Right, or, and that could be. Yeah, or maybe put two or three, so that you have the option, no matter where the rain barrel is, to be able to go. And you can cap these. You with could just cap, cap the others. That's true. Um, and then I have my hose going into watering cans. Okay. So not a series of cascading watering right. cans. That would be really cool. But I, I visited my parents over the weekend and my dad has one that I built for him, mm -hmm. but he rigged it up so that it has a little short piece of hose going into a bucket. Yeah. So it just squirts out the side into a bucket and then he fills up the bucket and he can take that bucket and yep. dump it wherever. Yep. Um, but yeah, a lot of different options there. Do we want to go ahead and put an overflow on this one? What do you think? What direction would do you think it should go? Really any. Do you care? Okay. So she mm -hmm. said the spigot's going to be away from the house. Mm -hmm. And so we're just above the spigot. Okay. One of the other things that I, I had to learn the hard way with was... Um, if you drill too mm -hmm. up, too high up here, you end up drilling into the edge of the lid. And then you're kind of stuck with where you can put your lid. Otherwise, you could turn your lid and have your lid facing any way you want. I've had my same rain barrel in the same position, but have moved it. So, oh, this year I want the spigot on this side. And then, oh, next year I want it on the other side. So you have a little more, a little bit more room to work with there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, you want it down below this this first lip so that you aren't getting into the lid. Um, did you want to come and do that one too? Or are you having too much fun? Sorry, we're talking an awful lot here. Um, do we have how do one? We wanna... Do we have one of the fittings? I don't have one of the fittings. How do we get that out of there, Todd? Uh, well, you do it. Screwdriver. Oh, screwdriver. Let me see if I can find a screwdriver. Just a flathead screwdriver. See, that's what it's almost melted from the no. heat on there. And so it stays. But there's these little slots on the side that you can loosen it up with. Kinda need a skinnier screwdriver. He asked for a regular flat screwdriver, didn't he? And now he's he's telling me that I didn't give him the right one. I need Do you thin, need something smaller? I need a thinner screwdriver. 
One moment, we're under technical difficulties. Hang on, I'm going to have to run to the hardware store. I don't have a flathead. I'm, you're going to have to use a you're going to have to use a thinner one that's not flat. Okay. But I think you can do it. Oh yeah, we got I have it with faith that. in you. We have we've got it with that. So that just pops right out. Awesome. All right. Doctor. There you go. Mhm. Mm yeah, I mean that's that's fine. I Yep. It all it's all up to what you want. Once again, we need to freeze that bit, I guess. Is it melting it? I think it's melting. You're doing a great job. It'll cool down fast enough. What's that? It'll cool down fast enough to work. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. So now we just need one of those fittings that goes from one inch, um, one inch one pipe inch thread pipe to thread. three quarter inch garden hose. Yes. And then we'll be golden. Do we have another one on? Um, I don't think I have one on the, the other example that we had here either. I think we forgot them last time as well. But I, I we'll like the overflow so you can control it. I uh -huh. think that really, I mean, I, I think that makes a big difference. But, I mean, you could make a small water feature out of it. I mean. Oh, you could. That's true. I mean, that would be kind of like a. That would be fun. Um, is there anything else that we need for this thing before we use it? Just that, just that one fitting on the overflow. Is there anything I, else you would have on I yours? I can't think of anything else. Okay. Can you think of anything else? You could paint it. Could good, paint it. good idea. Um, one of the challenges is with these plastic ones, um, the paint doesn't adhere real well. But there is special paint that you can get for plastic. Yep. And you could paint it. No, that's a that's a great idea. Um, I I have a friend down in Indiana who every year he enters a, a hand painted it. Um, a hand-painted rain barrel in a competition with other hand-painted rain barrels, which I think is pretty cool. Is we might cool. have to do that sometime. We could do that. We Maybe talked about all over the community. We could. Um, we could just put community homeworks on the side. Right. Maybe not. Um, we we actually talked about at one of the past workshops where we had some Bell's beer employees with us. We said it would be really fun to go to the Bell's beer garden after doing this and have a drink and paint a rain barrel so we could have a second half of this class but yeah. um we're, we're not to that point yet so we can't do that someday um so we could paint it anything else tiana do you have ideas for what else we need the latch thing that we spoke oh. up to keep it secure so they do make a ring that goes around here mm -hmm. and i don't have that on any of mine and i haven't had trouble with people climbing into it to take a bath or anything one of the other things that I've thought about on mine at home, I've taken a piece of metal strapping mm -hmm. and put a screws down through the top and into the side of my garage so that uh, when the kids are playing around, it can't fall oh, off of the off of the cement blocks and crush them. Um, because eight pounds of water times 55, 50, 50 gallons. 400 pounds. It's 400 pounds of water falling on a kid. So that's a lot of water. That's a lot of weight. So you don't want that happening. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you secure it somehow. Um, earlier, Tiana had asked, what do you do in the winter? So you said you just open up your valve. You, yep. you leave the valve in place? I, I leave the valve in place. I you open just it open up it up and, and let it, it run on through? Yep, leave it. Yep. And doesn't it, and it doesn't break in there? Um, it hasn't yet. Okay. Do you no. get a nice icicle off the bottom? You know, in one of my rain barrels, this I have a plastic, just a turn knob, uh -huh. uh, ball valve style. These are called gate valves. Okay. So these can take a little bit. They don't take as much uh, uh, weather as a ball valve would. A ball okay. valve is just like a quarter turn and it's uh -huh. open. And <clears throat> these, there's a lot, there's a little bit more of the mechanism that can get water in them. But <clears throat> I think as long as you're not opening and closing in the winter. I don't water my garden in the winter very much. Right. So, and see, I do. I do something completely different with mine. Um, I leave this closed, and in the fall, I take the take the lid off and stick it in the garage, 
and I take the rain barrel and, flip and I flip down. it upside down on the same blocks where I have Ooh, everything yes. else. And then I take my, where's my downspout? So I have a, I have a piece coming down like this where it goes into that funnel on the top of the rain barrel. And instead of doing that, I just take a piece of the downspout and I stick it so it shoots out over the side. And like I said, that one is by my garage, so it doesn't matter if it shoots out over. It right. gets a little farther away from the garage, uh, but now it's protecting the rain barrel so that it's not freezing up in winter. So that's my way of dealing and with you that. Can clean, and it cleans it out. As you could well. what? And it cleans it out. It does clean it out. One one challenge I've had with that one in particular is, well, I have to unscrew that thing on the top that keeps it from crushing my children yes. um, to do that. But then all, but then I have the, uh, a different problem where the wind will hit it and take it, mm. you know, across the yard or into the neighbor's yard. Um, and I haven't found a good way to deal with that other than just putting a brick or something on top. The um, blocks. Right. You could do that. But move then the blocks, blocks up. can fall in the your blocks kids. fall on the kids then instead. That wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be good. Um, so let's see. That would be winter. Um, what other things do we have to be thinking about here? Um, the city of Kalamazoo doesn't regulate water barrels as far as I, I have heard. Correct? Not to, the, not to my knowledge. Okay. No. They don't. They don't care if you're collecting water or anything like that. No. Um, I would think if you're doing it in a rain barrel and safely, then yes, if you're collecting it and you don't, and you're not protecting it from mosquitoes and mm -hmm. other things like that, that that's where it gets probably more against an ordinance of sorts. Right. One of the other things I wanted to mention that I've done on some of mine is since I have this hose fitting here, mm -hmm. I can have another rain barrel next to it Absolutely. and run the hose out of this one into the next one. So instead of this overflowing, this one starts filling up the next one, the one that's right next to it. Yep. And so I could have multiple in a chain um, and they're only all, one gutter and only one gutter. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool idea as, as well. Um, other questions before we finish up here? No other questions. All right. And have we gotten any questions online? No questions online either. I think everyone online is asleep, but right. that's okay. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to write in um, in the comment section or give us a call at Community Homeworks. I don't want to be over. I want to be off screen. Um, give us a call at Community Homeworks or email us at education at communityhomeworks.org, and we will try to answer those questions. Um, look, she put it on the screen, and then she took it off. Nice. Um, next week, we have another workshop coming up on Tuesday. What do you think it should be, Tiana? How about a Lee Taylor class, like lawnmower, lawnmower maintenance would be a perfect one for next week. Perfect. So next week we will be talking about lawnmower maintenance with Mr. Lee Taylor in this same space. If you would like to attend in person, please head on over to our website and um, visit the link that um, says you can register here, or you can also email us at the, um, oh, it has the info at communityhomeworks.org instead of the education. Either one will get to us. That's fine. Um, but register for that. You can come on out and uh, hang out in the classroom with us in the air conditioning because why not? Yeah. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. I hope you learned a little something and hope you um, got your rain barrel situation figured out. If you end up building a rain barrel using our plans or modifying them, take a picture and send it to us. We'd love to see what you're doing. We'd love to see how you made it work in your situation. For sure. So, Todd, thank you very much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. And thank you, Bree, for joining us, and Tiana, and Kaylin, and whoever else is out there on in cyberspace. Um, have a great night. Bye.